told us about how he discovered and reported these crimes at HSBC. And we now continue that conversation to explore what can be done to fix the system. We have to wonder, obviously, at the relationship that HSBC and other banks obviously have in, into the corporate apparatus that is the mainstream media. And we obviously we know that these banks are very much tied in, invested in, um, you know, basically lenders to the, the corporations that do own the media. So there's a sensitivity, I think, when it comes to going after these guys. But now you've obviously you said you're a fighter. You've been sticking with the story and continuing your, your investigation. Have you discovered anything since you since the case broke and essentially since 2012? Have you found anything new regarding HSBC's relationship to various? laundering of drug and, and terror and other, other illicit profits? Yeah, I mean, I mean, my attorneys, we, we, we submitted, um, you know, uh, a number of document, documents to the SEC. Um, and from my understanding, um, the SEC is, is, is working on this, so is the Department of Justice. Um, and uh, it's hard, I can't, I can't go into too much detail into an, into an ongoing, uh, you know, live investigation. Mm -hmm. but. The situation with HSBC isn't over. I mean, I'm not letting this go. I mean, you know, and you have to understand that, at, for instance, I had somebody tell me, like, you know, Everett, um, it's over with already. You just walk away and, you know, you, you've become successful, I guess, as a result, even though I lost everything that I built myself up. But, um, and what people don't understand is, is that if they saw what I saw there, they would not be giving up you know, either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I mean, I can't give up on this because I'm telling you that you know, wars cost money, and in the, and right now we're in deep <laughs> because they're getting the enemy is getting financed with a lot of money right now, a lot, and yeah. and just so the drug cartels and and you know, it, it's disgusting that here in the, this is occurring, we're allowing this in the United States, and and what I find interesting is that you know the. For instance, the, the Trump administration, and um, and you know, as, as you know, I left the Republican Party, and 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 when I ran for U.S. Senate in Pennsylvania, and now I'm more of an independent. Uh, but it's interesting how how Trump is, you know, very has taken a very strong stance on terrorism, which is great. Mm -hmm. But you know, he's he's starting in with this with the whole Muslim ban thing. But what I don't understand, even even being more of a Republican is, okay, well, we have banks here that are financing terrorism, why not go after the banks? Right. I would think that's more of a threat than some guy, I mean, just that, that, that makes more logical sense to me. Of course, and that's the whole point, is that, that, again, it goes back to this diversionary tactic where it's like, you know, focus on these people, you know, who may or may not actually engage in terrorism and not on the actual financing of the arms, because they're not making their own arms in the Middle East. They're not, you know, building their own weaponry. So obviously, you have to look at the money supply and, you know, who's, who's financing it, who's arming them. And if you really want to cut it off, as you say, you would actually do that. But at the end of the day, it seems that it seems, it seems to be a profit a making machine, obviously, for the financial sector to basically finance both sides of a conflict. How are you taking this fight to the political arena? Well, I'm taking it uh, in, in, in two different fronts. So, uh, one, uh, after after I left HSBC, as you, as known from the Rolling Stone feature, I mean, I lost everything after HSBC scandal. I was living in a 400 square foot apartment. I was sleeping on a, on a cot because I couldn't even afford a bed. And I was waiting tables at PF Chang's when my colleagues were making, you know, 55k a year over at HSBC, laundering money for terrorists. Um, but I founded my own company, and with with the goal, you know, it's called Tactical Rabbit, and the goal of the company is to prevent the next HSBC and to expose the national security threats. I mean, that's all I do now. Um, and with that, what I've, the, the 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 second front that I've launched is is is, is politically what I want to do is to get into office um, and actually make a difference because you know I I, I know that I can because I'm I'm sincere and. Um, let me give you a perfect example. So I went to um, this. Uh, I went to a Republican uh, dinner. Um, this is this is right before I started running for for Senate, and and there was a the congressman there. I'm not going to say the gentleman's name, but I asked him. I said, "What, what, what do you advise a young person uh, to do? You know, you know, how, how best can I win this election?" And he said to me, "He goes, Everett, just make them think that you care." Hmm. And I was like, "Wait, wait, what?" I was like, "But." But I, I do care. <laughs> like, there's no, you know, it was amazing, but this is what's going on in Washington, and they're a bunch of pigs, to be honest with you. And and what bought, what made me run for U.S. Senate was that Senator Pat Toomey, my opponent, um, 
was sitting on the Senate Bank Financing Committee while I was blowing the whistle on HSBC and losing everything, and he was out and eating fine dinners and uh, you know letting HSBC off the hook. Um, and what happened was during the Senate elections, HSBC formed a PAC and they started buying up senators, literally by donating um, money to their campaigns. Um, and that's a huge conflict of interest. I mean, right. if you're sitting on the Senate Bank's financing committee, why are you accepting donations from a bank that has admitted to financing the enemy? Well, that, that's kind of a problem. Um, so I decided to throw my hat in the ring against Pat Toomey, and I knew I was going to lose. I mean, I'm 30. I was, I mean, I'm 32, and I was 31 when I started running. And therefore, if ethically, I felt uncomfortable accepting donations. So I spent 50 to 75,000 of my own money to, to run against him, knowing I'm going to lose, just to get the message out, just to show him and to show the public that you know what, David will stand against Goliath, and and. We just have to take a stand no matter what. Right. And the guy, you know, Senator Toomey, did end up winning. Now he's back on the Senate Bank Financing Committee. Um, but that's okay, though. I'm not angry because eventually I'm going to, one thing I'm very good at is persistence, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to give up, and eventually I'll win. Yeah. And, right. then, and, then I'll, and then I'll throw him in jail for, for <laughs> you, know, tra you know, for being a traitor uh, to an enemy bank. Precisely. No, I mean, it's, it's very admirable what you're doing, essentially, is to reform the system because, I mean, it started because, as you said, you lost everything. And how did the financial world treat you as a whistleblower at HSBC? Would any other firm be willing to hire you, or would banks just basically turn a cold shoulder and say, oh, geez, this guy's trouble? Oh, yeah, no. I mean, nobody, I mean, well, one, when, when, the, when the case first broke, I mean, people thought I was crazy. They, you know, they, um, they're like, well, what is this guy saying? He doesn't, make, you know. And it wasn't until the media started reporting on it, really, when Matt Taibbi did the Rolling Stone article, that's when people started listening to me, and I started getting more credibility. And then when people, when I got on camera more, people realized, oh, this guy's not just some nut. Like he's he's telling the truth. And actually, what really helped me was HSBC when they when they admitted to everything that I'm saying. Like that really helped. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, I I I I, I guess. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean, I guess the the, the overarching um, mission um, is to make that significant positive difference by create by doing it on my own without the media because I realize the media is just not overall the media is just not going to help. Um, and, and and you didn't want to go back into Wall Street. I'm saying you didn't want to work on another bank at that point. You felt like it was just the system itself was too corrupt. I couldn't do it. No, there's no way. I, I, I could never go back to a cubicle again, and I could never have a boss tell me what to do ever again. Um, and look, I mean, I, from waiting tables at PF Chang's five years ago, I've turned my. I mean, again, I don't say it's out of arrogance or anything, but I've I've, it's a, I've run a multi-million-dollar organization. I mean, we're you know I'm. I'm doing okay now, which is great, thank God, because I really, I was eating peanut butter and jelly and hot dogs for months at a time. I had no money. Um, but I built myself up with honor and integrity. I didn't cheat, I didn't steal, nothing. I built it up in the honorable way. Um, and, and I think the American public needs to understand that, that the American dream and, and is still possible, and, and the good guys do win in the end. That's the important message. and and. and that that's all I'm trying. It's about self-sacrifice, and and not the money, and not and that was the thing is that I I I fought and still continue to fight. Like I have nothing to lose. I mean, if someone if they even if HSBC sued me, which they're, they're, I know they're trying to do, and they took away every single dime I had, I don't care. I don't care because my my mission and my objective is not that profit. That's that's the banks. What my objective is is making that difference. And if I leave this earth, which is helping one person. And getting that message across that the good guys win in the end, and that people should take individual responsibility to protect not only the country, but but not in a from a counterterrorism standpoint, mm -hmm. but also protect the country from a ethical and moral standpoint, and and protect what really is America and our culture. Then I'll be successful. Right now, I'm not successful. Yeah. But but I'll, but I'll tell you something that what's occurring right now in America is not. American, American, real, true American culture, and that's why I left the Republican Party. That's why I'm running. I'm an independent. I left. The, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not affiliated with the Democratic Party because it's just. I, I think the whole political system right now is so perverted. I just don't. 
you know, I'm not going to make people think that I care. I'm just no. not going to do that. Yeah. No, no paying lip service. It's time to get real. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and, and again, people are suffering out there and people are, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not here. I'm not running for office anytime soon. I probably won't run for another 10 years or something, but, but I, you know, it, it, it's, this is the fight. It has nothing to do with, with, with winning off. Like my company, I don't even, and this is where the investors hate me because they, they want the profit and the bottom line when I really don't care about the profit and bottom line. What I care about is exposing national security threats, which we have on our website. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, for instance, we, 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 uh, we, we found, um, we hacked photos of Kim Kardashian um, helping raise money for Hezbollah. Hmm. Uh, and that was, you know, the, the, the company I mentioned in the beginning, Tajiko, which is what was at HSBC, uh, that's owned by the Tajin brothers. Right. And the Tajin brothers were throwing all these parties in, in Africa, and, and, um, and for some reason, Kim Kardashian feels it's necessary to accept their money, to help them raise money, and everyone here in America thinks that's okay. But you know what? Here's the thing. I can't really fault American society for that because... Again, this goes back to the media. They just don't know. Right. I sent our intelligence support to CBS News, to CNN. Nobody picked up on it. No. Uh, and that's the, that's, the, that's the battle you're fighting. But I really appreciate the work you're doing. Wish you luck. People like yourself and Brad Birkenfeld and other whistleblowers have been tremendous to exposing the corruption within our financial sector. And now it's up to you to keep going forward and telling the truth as, you, as best you can. And, and again, and I, and I say this message to other whistleblowers. You cannot think of yourself. I don't, you cannot think of yourself as a whistleblower or you have to be a fighter. It's an ongoing fight. You just don't blow the whistle and walk. Right. That's not how it works. Yeah. If, you, if you see a wrong, you have to keep fighting and fighting and fighting until something is changed. And right now, as you know, and I'm sure the audience knows, nothing's changed right now. And that's why I consider myself more of a failure because I didn't get anyone in jail and the system's not changed. Not yet. In future. Let's hope. Let's Hopefully. keep working on it. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining thanks, me. Thanks, Sean. I appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, sir. Sexism is a racket. Sir Andrew Baron Murray, better known as Andy Murray, the number one ranked male 